Over the past 50 years, Climate Tech has grown and kept pace with the ever-changing HVAC industry, providing our customers with the best knowledge on the most innovative systems and services. Serving Lorraine and Western Cuyahoga counties, Climate Tech is a full-service heating, air conditioning, and ventilation company. A third-generation, family-owned and operated company providing the most up-to-date level of service and installation with the best quality products. Today, your comfort demands customized solutions utilizing best industry practice combined with high-quality, reliable products that protect you and your home. The HVAC industry will never stand still. It's a commitment to the environment that we learn, train, and produce next-level efficient products and services. Partnering with Green Sky Financing and our dedicated customer care software allows us to give you the comfort that you need in your home. Smart products, smart technicians, and dedication to details drive us to deliver highly effective products into your home today and into the future. It's week six now of the Climate Tech Inc. NFL Prediction Show. Cole McDaniel, Vince McKee here. And last week was really the best week I've ever had prediction-wise. It was a week where we had a lot different. There are some times where we only have two, three games different. It was five. Five. So we knew that there was no chance of us splitting. And a lot of times when we pick a bunch of games differently, it's a lot of times three, two, or, or so on and so forth. It was completely different this past week. Luck was going my way, and all it takes is one week to change a season. Midweek last, it was about midseason last year, Vince, that I was leading, and then you had one week that, that then you'd managed to take the lead, and you didn't let go last season in what was back and forth and so close, but I couldn't quite close that gap all the way until the very end. Could this be the week that turns it around for me? Or is it just another up in the up and downs we always have at this prediction show? We'll wait and find out. But Vince, great to be with you again. Oh, yeah, no doubt. A couple of things there. Congratulations on the big week. That was pretty cool to watch. Our first ever 5 nothing shutout, which is just stunning. Um, you were up six last year at Thanksgiving. So it, it was a long crawl back. And I remember I was getting two back here, two back there. And then it seemed like it was like even going into that last week. And the last week was crazy. And then, as everybody knows, the uh, even Steven playoffs, which is just astonishing. But a couple of things, you know, and you won fair and square. So this is no, this is no excuse. I just here's what made it more excruciating for me, fans, to the point where last night I am not a violent man, but I had to make sure there was nothing sharp or heavy for me to throw. Because if you <laughs> if you look at four, four of those five games, I had a chance to win. You look True. at. Every team that I picked, um, with the exception of the New Orleans uh, New England blowout, every team that I picked had the ball in their hands at game end and couldn't do anything with it. I think every one of them turned it over, ironically enough, with the exception of Atlanta. I was actually I had picked their opponent and they were in the lead, and then Atlanta kicked the field goal with two seconds remaining to win. So. Honestly, guys, I mean, I don't like to lose, period. Cole's known me for a long time. I hate losing. But to lose four games in the in, in, in the final seconds, there's not much greater pain other than shopping with my wife on Black Friday. So it was it was not fun. That's all I can say. But that's it, it, it's, it makes it a great time. I love Climate Tech. Um before we get to this week's show, just just want to throw them out again, man. They're just they're incredible. I was actually texting with Tim Beckner. Their vice president this very morning. Um, they just do a phenomenal job. They were out here. They fixed our heat last year. So, Climate Tech definitely want to shout them out for sure. So, hey, you know it's it's only we're, we're five weeks in. It's nuts. I wrote an article that will be uh, posted by the time the show goes live on Thursday. Um, just amazing. I'm gonna th- I'm gonna tell you this real quick before we get going too. In the article that I wrote, okay, it's about the parity of the NFL right now, and I think it's astonishing. You have 32 teams in the NFL. And I believe the number I, I um, came up with was 18. 18 teams are either two and three or three and two. Mm-hmm. Now you look at the Browns, who were two and two, so they would have been one or the other had they played this previous week. One or lost, the other would have been three and two, two and three. So all that being said, guys, it's fascinating just how even this league is. There's only one winless team. You have two teams that haven't lost. You have a surprising Miami Dolphins team at four and four and one. You have a Chargers team that's two and three. Are they that bad? Is it coaching? What's their problem? Cincinnati, are they going to turn around at two and three? There's so many question marks. 
The Indianapolis Colts, I'm going to talk about them with my upset pick a little bit later, so I just hedged it on that bet. But there's teams that are 3-2 and two that it's like, hey, are these are they 3-2? and two? So it's fun to be an NFL football fan, man. It's a short season for a reason. Every win counts. It's not like we're talking baseball and basketball. This is what really packs it in. So, again, man, and enjoyable to be here. Let's have some fun. Yeah, absolutely. So after... I went 12 and 2 last week. I sit with a record of 50 and 28. Vince still went 500, 7 and 7, 47 and 31. So again, still within striking distance, just three games back. And we get this show underway. And again, we don't know how many we picked differently here to this point. So let's find out if there's an opportunity for you to knock this thing up or potentially take the lead back. And we'll start with Thursday night football. So Thursday night football this week, all your Broncos, we get to see them on Thursday night. Uh, They have struggled this year. They got one win against the Bears, and the Bears really did everything they could to lose that game. I don't think the Broncos should feel very good about where they're sitting right now. Certainly the Patriots and the Broncos look bad. Both of those two in the AFC looks like they could be competing for that number one pick potentially in the NFL draft if things keep trending the way it's trending right now. And the Broncos, they have a division rival in the Kansas City Chiefs on Thursday night. I don't think the Chiefs are nearly as immortal as they've been in the past. I think they've started to regress a little bit. We're starting to see some injuries for a guy like Travis Kelsey. Age is starting to catch up to him. Of course, they have all the hype of the the, the swift you know, Kelsey thing that we've talked about before, and we're not going to talk, talk talk more about that here at this point. But things are just catching up to them, right? And you knew that it would happen at some point. They don't necessarily, if, the, if Kelsey is out, they don't necessarily have a true guy on offense that this is our go-to guy. We're going to throw him the ball all the time. I think Rasheed Rice might be about their best bet, the young rookie receiver, Uh, But again, they're trying to spread that ball around the field. So who's that go-to guy when you need the reception at the end if Kelsey actually still labors with injuries throughout the season? I don't know. So there's question marks there. Regardless, though, the Chiefs, they're going to roll in this game. I'm going to say cruise to a victory. This is going to be a garbage Thursday night football game. Interesting to at least see if you're a fantasy football player what some of the Chiefs guys on your teams could potentially put up points wise because I think it's going to be a route offensively. Russell Wilson, the Broncos, they're going to do noth- nothing on offense, and that defense is going to be really needing a life raft thrown to them out there because they're going to be drowning out in the water. Chiefs, 45 to 14. Chiefs will win big. Um, I agree with you on that one. I want to throw out a few points. Broncos cannot seem to stay healthy. That's, you know, one of their bigger problems. Um, winnable games they're losing, just like last year. And ironically enough, you kind of mentioned um, you mentioned it. You mentioned the Patriots, right? So you look at the Broncos and the Patriots, and if you were to start an NFL franchise right now and you had the opportunity to hire Bill Belichick or Sean Payton, you're going to do so in a heartbeat. Probably over, I'd easily say, 80% of the, the current coaches, right? I, Bill Belichick would be number one. But you look at what's out there coaching wise and to think that these teams the Patriots and the Broncos are both so bad with those two head coaches is just stunning plus the Broncos got a ton of threats they're not a bad football team on offense it just or defense they just find ways to lose games it's remarkable that being said I think the Chiefs roll want to throw this out here for you too as I was excruciating last night and let me tell you I was excruciating during that loss the the uh the um the Packers were my last hope, but the one thing I wanted to bring up because you mentioned the Chiefs and this is why because it all ties in together here. So the thing with the with with the with the Chiefs, okay, yeah, Kelsey's their go-to guy. That's who they're going to look for. Understood, but they need that second guy because look what the Raiders did last night. And I just want to make this point: it opens it up dramatically when you have that second threat. Look at the first half of last night's Monday Night Football game. Jacoby Myers had his way. Six catches, I believe it was for 84 yards. He was a stud last night in that first half. Right towards the tail end of the first half, all of a sudden the Raiders started finding Devontae Adams, and that's what won them the game, because eventually they found Adams play after play after play. It was Adams, Adams, Adams. And look what they did, because Myers opened that up. So that second receiver is something, and we're going to talk about it later on with the Browns, 
but having that go-to solidified second receiver is a major, major thing. Jerry Rice had John Taylor. It goes on and on down the lines. Michael Irvin had Alvin Harper. I can One after another, I can name them for you. I won't. The whole point is that the Chiefs eventually need to find that, but you know what? They're two Super Bowls in. They've been the three with the staff. Can't really fault them. And they won one last year without Tyreek Hill. So, again, it does speak volumes for Andy Reid's coaching. That it does, and you and I both feel comfortable about the Chiefs winning in that one, and, and the Broncos have a long way to go. If I have to, had to make a bet here, my thing is that I think the Broncos are worse than the Patriots, and strictly because I trust Bill Belichick and I trust defensively how they play schematically. I think there's good defensive players for the Broncos. I think the Broncos probably have a better shot to get that number one spot in the draft coming up between those two teams. But that being said, I think that the Patriots need it more. I don't think Russell Wilson's a good quarterback at all. I think he's struggled the last couple of years. He used to be good, right? Something about maybe the work ethic. Maybe he's just, he's regressed. He's not the same guy. No. But a bad Russell Wilson is still better than a good Mac Jones. Yes. Agreed. And as a Bronco. believe that. As a Broncos fan, here's the thing. You know, I hated Russell Wilson when, when he played for the Seattle Seahawks, but he had that underdog role. Maybe because he came from Wisconsin. I don't know. But he had, he had this, you know, he's a short guy, whatever, underdog role, third round pick, whatever it was. And he had that underdog feeling. Now he's like that crafty veteran, right? Comes in with a Super Bowl ring, um, two Super Bowl appearances. He's Russell Wilson. Everybody loves him type thing. And I don't think he has that same hunger. Sometimes it's mental. You know, he had pictures, weird pictures on Instagram and, and that kind of thing before the season began. I remember, you know, somebody, one of his coaches called him out, um, you know, stop worrying about hugging babies, whatever. It's just, it's, it's just to me, it's like the Broncos, they don't have that feel to them anymore. One funny thing I'll throw out there, though, going back 10 years of doing this show, um, you know, or four years with us, but, you know, let's just go back 10 years. You had Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. That's how far regressed both those franchises are. Broncos have had nobody since Peyton Manning and the Patriots, obviously, without Tom Brady. So, you know, kind of moving on, it just it's it makes you wonder if Belichick's ever going to do it again without a stud quarterback. Yeah, I don't know. But if they get the number one pick, I, I actually had a buddy who's a Patriots fan text me the other day. and He said, you know, I kind of think I just want Caleb Williams at this point. Like, that's fair. That would be a major upgrade over Mac Jones at quarterback there in New England. Could be interesting because they haven't really had a star since Tom Brady left. That would absolutely give them a star, certainly a different type of player than what Tom Brady was. But Caleb Williams, he's electric. He can really do anything. So we'll we'll see who actually wins the sweepstakes for him, but certainly a few teams that are in the runnings. Obviously, Thursday night football, we're both going Chiefs. Sunday night football, though, the Bills and the Giants. And this Bills team... Bill, this Bills team has been decimated defensively by injuries. Your pick to win the Super Bowl this year, a team that I've been high on in past years, and I'm still high on this year, but I didn't think they would make it to the Super Bowl because the Bills, they've always let me down here the last few years when I've actually tried to jump on the train for them. Offensively, they have a ton of weapons. Josh Allen is is great. I think James Cook, even though he was quiet last game, he's a great, he's a really electric runner but he's excellent out of the backfield as a pass catcher as well they have something with James Cook there in the backfield and right now he's the better Cook brother between him and Dalvin Dalvin's on the downhill decline James Cook is currently on the rise here right now you have Diggs who obviously is an an excellent wide receiver one Gabe Davis can be a downfield threat at times he has his good and bad moments and they have a couple tight ends to go to there's good things on offense, but their defense, can they stand strong this season with the, the injuries? I don't know. And then the Giants, they've had their injuries, and Daniel Jones has been awful. Obviously, I'm not really looking forward much to this Sunday night football game, Vince. Me either. And what's frustrating is last week, we were gung-ho, 49ers Dallas. I ended up leaving on halftime to go to the gym. I, I was that like, this game stinks. And it got worse while I was there. Um, yeah, man, I, I I think Buffalo wins. I agree with you, though. The, defensively, they're a little bit banged up. I don't know if they can win the Super Bowl with that defense. Um, either they have to get healthy or make a trade. Something drastic. 
We saw, you know, uh, uh, years ago, the Rams do it with Von Miller. I mean, there's teams that go out there and, and make a trade deadline move and it gets them over the hump. So we'll see what the Bills had to play with. And I also agree with you on the James Cook comment. I think he was better than David uh, Devin Singletary last year. Still shocked they cut Singletary at their only one season. But, um, I mean, they, they made a few strange moves in the in the uh, offseason. But regardless, um, definitely uh, think Buffalo wins. But I may I must up there. I actually think Singletary was more than one season. So I think three. Yeah, my fault. I'm thinking of of the muscle hamster receiver. So <laughs> yeah, Isaiah McKenzie. Sorry about that. Yeah, and I saw you squint your face. I'm like, you know what? I think I just flubbed. But yeah, regardless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, Buffalo should win. My mental just, math had to start working there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, and truth be told, la- you know, last week when I said I was tired of seeing New York teams in prime time games, I didn't even realize. I didn't look ahead to even realize that they had another one coming up. But this is five in five weeks with either the Jets or the Giants on a Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night. I'm about sick of it. So hopefully that's it for a while on that. I, I haven't looked ahead to week six either. I might just – week seven. Who knows? I'm sick of it. Well, I know there's for sure more Jets primetime games throughout the rest of the season because they thought Aaron Rodgers was going to yeah. be obviously on the team. And, and he's still part of the team. But, of course, the injury – takes him out for the season. Uh, I don't know about the Giants. I haven't I haven't looked at the Giants schedule in a little while, so I'd have to glance at that again. But here's the thing. New York is a a big town and it's always a big hub for when it comes to sports things. If New York has a good team, right? It's just like LA, uh, it's it's just like Chicago. They're going to try to find a way to make some of those really big major cities in the in the spotlight when they had the opportunity and the giants have been bad for quite a while and the jets have been bad for a long time as well. So they thought going into this year, the NFL is thinking, great, we're going to have two good ones. The giants went to the playoffs last year. They're only going to get better. And the jets now have Aaron Rodgers. They're in contention. So they thought they had two good New York teams loaded them up in prime time. And now they both stink. So far. And that's what we're stuck with. I'm going to say Buffalo, they win this game. As much as their defense has the the holes and the injuries, they're going to bounce back offensively. Jacksonville won, of course, in London, because why would Jacksonville not lose <laughs> in London? Because they're fantastic in England. They might as well just stay over there. Of course, there had been talks about Jacksonville being the franchise to potentially go over to London if they move somebody. So, I don't know. They might as well just stay over there if they keep winning games like that. They'll win a Super Bowl if they stay over in England. But Jacksonville beats the Bills. The Bills now looking to bounce back. I don't think Buffalo's bad enough to lose two games in a row, especially against a Giants team that's, that has struggled this year. As bad as their defense could become with injuries, they're still good enough to probably pressure, pressure Daniel Jones. Even if Saquon Barkley comes back, it'll be his first time back in a few weeks. I think he sh- probably should be back at this point. Uh, but how effective will he be in the first time back? I don't know. Will he be 100%? Will he be 90%? I don't know. We'll wait and see on that. But I don't trust Daniel Jones. He's been poor this year. And he's I, trust, up. I trust Josh Allen, though. And you're right. He is the neck injury. So if he doesn't go, we would see Tyrod Taylor guy that we are familiar with and uh this is not Tyrod of a few years ago he hasn't gotten nearly as many snaps as he did earlier in his career so really a a true backup that uh that doesn't get enough reps to probably go out there and beat Josh Allen in a duel so I'm I'm saying 42 to 23 there's been a lot of low scoring weeks but I think this will be a high scoring week in the NFL events yep agreed So Monday Night Football, another one that could be a shootout. And I am really interested to see where you go with this one because the Cowboys looking to bounce back after their drubbing against the 49ers and they're going up against the Chargers who just had a bye week. And the Chargers are a team in big games that seem to always come close but not win in the end. You and I have been high on the Chargers for a couple years, but they've had issues with Staley not managing games well and some of his calls being head scratchers and and costing the team at the end. How he is still 
in that position as head coach of the Chargers this year after last year? I'm not sure. Maybe they just gave him the excuse of the injuries. The team's been pretty healthy aside from Austin Eckler, and now Mike Williams went down for the year, but Keenan Allen's at least healthy right now. So again, that makes up for um, you know Williams going out having Allen healthy. And, and of course, you you have still some other wide receivers to slot in there. Herbert, I know, is a little dinged up, but it was his non-throwing hand, so I think he'll be okay. If, as long as it's not the throwing hand, He's going to be out there gutting it out and, and toughing it out. And like I said, I think we should see Eckler back here soon. So the Chargers are healthier than they were last season, despite a few dings and nicks and a couple guys out. Going up against the Cowboys, though, having the bye week after the Cowboys got smoked, you'd think that the Dallas is going to respond and come back. And I would be really, really inclined to pick Dallas in this game. If it weren't for Diggs and his injury in that secondary, I don't think is is quite as good at getting the turnovers. In a, in a shootout, one turnover can be the difference maker. I don't know if the Cowboys have the playmakers to get as many turnovers. Sure, I've seen Malik Hooker. He was a safety at Ohio State who got a ton of interceptions. He's a, he's a ball hawk there in the middle of the field. But I don't think you have those true corners to take that ball away. Leighton Van Der Esch went down with an injury in the last game. You have Micah Parsons, who you always have to key on him, but I think he's the main focus on that defense, and if you can at least eliminate him a little bit or slow him down, you might be okay. And offensively, I think Dak's regressing too. Just like Russell Wilson, I think Dak continues to take some steps back. He's sliding down my list of quarterbacks in the NFL. Still in the upper half, but he's getting closer and closer to that midway point. And we're seeing after game after game when they need him to step up big, he's not doing it. I'm going with the Chargers here, Vince. I went I went away from the Chargers for a few weeks, but I think off of the bye week, I like how the shape's up for them. In a shootout with two weeks to prepare for Dallas, Dallas has a bunch of injuries on the offensive line, got some injuries that are key on defense. In general... Chargers, I can't believe I'm saying it, are healthier than the team they're going up against. I'm going L.A. You know, it's a fascinating game coming up here. I agree with you that should be a shootout. Both teams dinged up injury-wise. As you said, the Chargers on the offensive side of the ball, Dallas on the defensive side of the ball. You know, you look back to early last year, and it was like, okay, once the Chargers got both to the back, all would be right with the world. And it just still never turned in their favor. Earlier this week, well, it's Tuesday night when we filmed the show, so I'll just say earlier today, um, Austin Eckler did practice. So everything that I've read points to Eckler playing for the Chargers. So there's a lot going there. I just feel it's a flip-flop. You know, with the 49ers, susceptible now to a possible letdown going into Cleveland, and we'll talk about that in a moment. I feel like Dallas is kind of the opposite. They might slide the other way. This is a game where they really have to pull together and win. You know, in a position now at 3-2, and two, they're already two games back at Philadelphia. They do not want that division to slip completely away by their bye week. That being said, I think Dallas pours on everything they have, puts it into this week against the Chargers. I, I'm going to go with the Dallas offense over the Chargers defense in this one. Like Cole said, I think it's going to be a shootout. You know, Monday Night Football, here we go again, right? You know, so it's going to be a, a different pick for us, but uh, it's going to make it a little bit more interesting than we thought. As we said, not real thrilled about Sunday night, but this Monday night game is very intriguing. I almost wish they could have flip-flopped them. Should be fun to watch, but definitely I think Dak Prescott, too. I will say this just to finish up Cole's point. On Prescott, you know, I do have him a little bit lower than I did a couple years ago. It it seems like two years ago when he broke his thumb and they thought the season was over and Cooper Rush came in and Cooper Rush played really well. Prescott came in. He's been good, but he's never been great since then. It makes you wonder sometimes. Let's see what the Cowboys have. I'm going to roll that dice one more time. And uh, like I said, take the Cowboys. So we have split on that one. And in the most interesting game of the primetime ones, of the three primetime matchups. Yeah, by far. The first two look like duds. It looks like they should be blowouts unless anything crazy happens, which I don't see a way that it it possibly does. Maybe the Giants more likely than the Broncos. But again, I I still don't uh, think that can happen there. But that Chargers-Cowboys one actually is a really good game to wrap up the week 
on Monday mm-hmm. night. I'm looking forward to it. I could have gone either way, but like I said, I just think the injuries for Dallas uh, could hurt them just enough that the Chargers, having that extra week to prep, should put them in a good spot to be ready for that one. So our upset games this week. Well, I got a few that I had my eye on, but there's one I want to talk about because I don't know about you, but from watching this season, I don't know how the line is currently sitting this way. There's a few where I question the lines and we do every single week. Uh, I'm actually, before I get to my pick, I'm going to toss it over to you. Vince, any lines that stood out to you where you're like, how is this team the favorite? Well, I had it written down on my old computer, on the computer I normally use. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I switched computers here. Changed a lot of things. Grew a beard. Changed the room. Uh, we're in the headset, so we'll see if it turns anything around this week. Um, let me look here, Cole. I, I do know that there there was one that kind of jumped off the page to me, and now I can't seem to find it. But uh, hold on one second here. I'm sorry I set you up for that. I forgot Not- you had the different computer. It's all good. I had everything written down too, which is the really the funniest part. Um, no, I mean, I guess there's really none that jumped off the page. I mean, I, I do have an upset of mine. I'm going to talk about. I'll make that pick right here. Um, and definitely, there might be more upsets if when you guys click on mm-hmm. KeyOnSports.com and take a look. Seattle being an underdog on the road in Cincinnati. Uh, thought that was kind of interesting to say the least. Um, just kind of looking through. My actual pick, though, and and it was hard because I wasn't sure what I was going to make official, what I was going to talk about. Uh, but, you know, as badly as I would like to take the Houston Texans again, um, I picked against the Saints, and every time I seen a pick against the Saints, it bites me. So Houston, I mean, that was really, really tempting. But my actual pick uh, is I took the Colts. Um, tough, again, to pick against NFL Europe's greatest team. But they finally had to come home. They've been struggling at home this year. Now, I'm going with the Colts as my upset special. They're four and a half point underdogs, but I want to toss this out there for everybody. They, with, okay, a couple things. One, what's the jet lag going to be with Jacksonville coming home finally? I mean, yeah, they should have plenty of rest, but, you know, that, that's a tough transition to come back home after London just like it would be to go there. Colts, this should be a three headed monster. Obviously, Richardson is not going to play, and he might not play again this season. But at some point, if you keep Richardson, Zach Moss, and Jonathan Taylor together, that could be deadly. Is Richardson good enough to win a Super Bowl by himself? Heck no. Thought he was picked way too high. Wasn't a huge fan of his. But I got to say, the guy's having a hell of a season. His problem is he can't stay healthy. He just can't stay healthy. He's played well. Gardner Minshew, he's going to be playing against his former team. I'm I'm rolling the dice. I'm taking the Colts, even though they're on the road. I just feel like there might be that revenge factor for him. Why did you take Trevor Lawrence and not keep me around? All kinds of crazy things we talk about there. But we're going to go ahead, I am at least, and the official upset pick. And again, look at KeonSports.com a little bit later for full picks from both of us. But the one here on the show, without a doubt, the Indianapolis Colts. I need them badly. Um, they crushed me last week. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so... Jacksonville last year when they won in London, don't forget that when they came back home and they came back last year and actually went on a little bit of a run, it was what sparked their season and pointed them in the right direction. I just think there's something about they get confidence when they're over there. Sure, there's the jet lagging coming back over, but the Jags are coming back to America with that that (laughs) British blood in them, and they're, they're going to beat the Indianapolis Colts. So the the British <laughs> blood, what do they eat? <laughs> they're, they're, they're full on Brits at this point. There you go. There and, you go. And they're going to take over American football here for a brief period of time. And they're going to beat the Indianapolis Colts and a, a team that's coming from the heartland of America going down to, <laughs> to Florida and going to get smoked. So that being said, though, you called it though. The line that I thought was interesting is strictly because the Seattle Seahawks are on the road at the Cincinnati Bengals. They find themselves the underdogs. Cincinnati got a bounce back win against the Cardinals, who have looked better than what most people expected. But of course, they're not getting the wins. They're still struggling to find wins, even when they're playing a little bit tough despite injuries. And of course, 
uh, not really having Kyler Murray in there. Josh Dobbs trying to do his best to fill in there as the starting quarterback. But even though the Bengals played better, I have to remind you it's against the Cardinals. Sure, Jamar Chase had been frustrated and went from basically saying he was as open as, as a 7-11, right? And he, they couldn't find him. Then he got targeted 19 times, had 15 catches, an incredible afternoon of football for him. As much as I think that maybe that rhythm's back, I don't think you can necessarily find Chase that many times against a much better Seattle Seahawks secondary. You can target him a bunch, but Tariq Woolen and Devin Witherspoon, mind you, Devin Witherspoon, the rookie, was one of my top three cornerback prospects coming into this past NFL draft. In the last game out for Seattle, he lit it up. He played incredible in that nickel position because he's a guy who's not afraid to make some big hits, come down and make some tackles. He's a corner who will stick his nose into a play. I like what I've seen out of him. So I don't think that that offense of the Bengals really leaning on Chase and those receivers is going to be able to do nearly as much against Seattle secondary. Joe Burrow looked better. He's still not this quite the same Joe Burrow. Something about that calf injury has had him like set back this year so far. He's still trying to get up to full speed, slowly but surely taking strides in the right direction, but slowly but surely might not be enough against a Seattle team who's coming off of a bye week. Again, when a team comes off of a bye week, there's one of two things that either happens. They either come out so prepared because they had two weeks to prep for a team, or they come out sluggish and slow because they're out of a rhythm. I said that I felt like the Chargers would be really prepared against the Cowboys. I'm going to stick with that the Seahawks are going to be prepared for the Bengals. They had an opportunity to watch them play that game against the Cardinals. I think they're going to do what they need to do to go down to Cincinnati and win that ball game here coming off of their bye week, get it done against the Bengals. And I, I feel confident about that. I think it doesn't matter where they would have played that game, home or away. Something about the Bengals struggling this year makes me think that they can't piece two wins back-to-back, Vince. Yeah, see, this is the toughest game on the docket for me. I don't know going with Cincinnati based on the sole fact that I feel like Joe Burrow right now has gotten a little bit better each week this season. Maybe last week was that confidence boost he needed to put full pressure on that calf, make better passes. Maybe it opens up the playbook a little bit for them as well. We talked about always having that second receiver. Jamar Chase, now there you go. He might go ahead and draw that double coverage this coming week. Who's going to be able to step up? It's a risky pick. Like I said, I mean, it wouldn't have shocked me one bit um, if Seattle was the favorite in this game for really all the reasons you just gave. So, you know, don't normally do this, but I'm picking against two teams in the same week coming off a bye. Um, it's risky business, but again, they might know something in Vegas. Who knows? Going to go with Cincinnati in this one. Perhaps. Perhaps. Interesting that you mentioned the Saints, because I think that's going to be a close ball game. You and I both sounds like we went with the Saints over the Texans, but I think I, did. I think that's close. I have that as a one-point ball game, 34-33. Mm-hmm. I'm actually excited to see that. The other thing, and I know we're not run through a ton of stuff, but I have to say that Bears-Vikings game could be an absolute dud between those two teams. Those two teams have struggled. But I have to say, that's the one where I think the underdog, the Bears, could possibly win it. Their game they played against Washington last week was that the kickstart that they needed and the Vikings are really struggling, potentially. So there's certainly a couple games upset-wise. I don't think as many last week, um, as many as last week that really stood out to me. But I still think there's a couple to watch out for that even if it doesn't result in an upset, it could be a very close ball game. I'm interested to see how this week does shape up, though, because I see a lot of games that should just be blowouts. It's unbelievable this week. Either the game's a surefire pick, or I have no idea who's going to win. That one you just mentioned, though, actually two of them, the Saints and the Texans. I think the Texans are better than people think. Yep. I think the Saints aren't as good as people think, although I did take the Saints on a sole factor that I want to see what this team has with Derek Carr and Elvin Kamara together in the lineup at the same time we saw it last week and it looked good so can they continue to string that together um alvin kamara is a difference maker when he's at his best he looked great last week 
Let's see what he could do. He's going to be inside again on turf against Houston. Um, the other one you just mentioned as well, I'll actually show my pick on that one. It was tough to do because I, I love Justin Fields, and I don't want to pick against them, but I did for the sole reason that Minnesota this season, I know you're not sold on them, but Minnesota, man, their schedule has been brutal. It's a murderer's row. It was, yeah. And and you almost look at the team, you know, that game against the Chargers, I'm sorry, but they very easily could have won some horrible clock management at the last second of that two-minute drive. Kirk Cousins throws a terrible pass. So now we got to think, like, okay, is it Kirk Cousins or was it all Justin Jefferson? Let's see what the Vikings can do without him. It's a little nerve-wracking. I mean, he's done until, they said, at least week 10 or 11. Um, and, again, full truth, fans, I made the pick before. I was positive Jefferson was going to be out, although I had a feeling still went with the Vikings. Um, let's see what they can do without him. It's going to be real interesting to see what Kirk Cousins could do. And as I said, make or break week for a few guys here. Joe Burrow, Dak Prescott, Kirk Cousins. I picked all three of them. Let's see what happens. Fair enough. What could be a make-or-break week here for the Cleveland Browns coming off of their bye week? Again, I went with a couple teams that were coming off the bye week. Vince went the opposite direction. Now the 49ers and the Browns facing off. Now it's in Cleveland. It worked out last week how you and I said would probably go in the favor of the Browns is the 49ers have to slip up at some point, right? So if they beat the 49 if they beat the Cowboys, then the 49ers are more likely to lose against the Browns the next week because they're going to stumble some point this season. They're not going to go undefeated. It right. won't happen in the current NFL landscape. But that being said, they smoked the Cowboys, which could actually be even more of a benefit, right? Where it's like, man, we are so good. We just beat down that team that's good. Could they get lethargic, come in, be complacent, undervalue the, the Browns? Potentially. Now, you and I actually were right last week. A lot of people were calling out the, the Deshaun Watson stuff and saying, oh, he's medically cleared. He should have played, right? He, it's right. 200 and whatever million, and I don't even remember the number because I don't give a damn. Right? 232. I don't care about that, and Again, I don't care about I, Taylor Swift. I yep. don't care. Don't care. Okay. All that matters is if he's your franchise quarterback, he's the guy you you have for a long time. That's your plan, right? You want to make sure that you have your quarterback really protected for the long road, right? Don't run him out there if he's not ready yet, okay? It's not going to necessarily help the team, right, in the here and now. And it's not going to help you in the future if he re-aggravates an injury or it becomes a greater injury, right? Now... We're hearing reports as of this week, you know, of course, that actually was coming out today, the day that we're recording the show, about it being the rotator cuff, right? There you go. That's a big deal. I Done. mean, that that's one of those things where if it's a rotator cuff injury, again, that's a huge part of him throwing the football. So if it's a contusion in the rotator cuff, like they're saying, that's a pretty deep bruise inside there on that. Of course, he wants to get out there and play. He probably felt like a million bucks, like he could run around and all those things. But when he actually throws the football, he can probably feel that something's just a little bit off and it's not right. And if he's just a little bit off and he's under throwing passes, over throwing passes, and he plays awful, then the Browns fan base is going to be calling for his head because he played like crap, right? But then they're mad that he doesn't go out there and tries to play through it. No, enough of that. They made the right decision, sat him that week. He got the bye week to rest. And if he's not ready to go against the Niners, that's a tough team to go up against with how Jed Wills has played at left tackle, uh, going up against a good pass rush there. You don't want to get the guy killed, right? <laughs> so if if Watson goes out there and plays, great. I hope he's, he's on his game because they might have a – have the potential of catching the Niners slipping. But if he's not fully ready to go, then don't risk it because your division is completely wide open. Everybody is hovering around 500. Yep. One one more week of a loss, if you run out a backup quarterback, isn't necessarily the end of the world in this division. You're not really playing a ton of chase here right now because the team that's leading – 
might actually be the worst team that I've seen so far. <laughs> that offense of the Steelers is awful. Mm-hmm. As bad as the no. Bengals have been, uh, the Steelers can thank their lucky stars for their defense. and how One fluke win play. after another. One fluke win after another. It's unbelievable. Absolutely. So I'd love to see the Browns go out there and potentially win this game, Vince. But my gut instinct is no matter whether it's Deshaun Watson out there or sounds like P.J. Walker might be the guy, which I think is a smart decision. Yep. Although we saw that Dorian Thompson Robinson played well in the preseason. Again, he's a smaller quarterback, right? Like Bryce Young having the same problems where a little antsy, can't see over the the big offensive line, I think, as well. Again, a rookie who just seemed to be a little bit happy and wanted to run, get out of the pocket too soon, lacked composure in that that game he played. He just seemed like a fish out of water. So P.J. Walker is a guy who has played some football, not only NFL, XFL as well. Keep in mind, last year, that play he had against the Falcons at the end of the game, too, was incredible as he launched it down the field. They scored the touchdown. Um, that was DJ Moore who caught that pass in the end zone at the time. Walker's had some good moments in the NFL. I think it would be the right decision where he runs out on the field if Watson's not ready to go. He gives you a better chance. But I'm going to say that this is not the week that the Niners slip up. Too many things are trending against the Cleveland Browns. First time this season I'm going against the Cleveland Browns fans. Yeah, Browns are in major trouble this weekend, and the crazy thing about it is this. If the Browns were 3-1, and one, even 4-0, and oh, actually, and, and Watson was healthy, I'd pick the Browns, because I do feel like this is the perfect setup for the 49ers to lose. That Browns defense is really good, and if anybody's going to stop that hurricane of an offense, it could have been the Browns defense, and this really would have set up, you know, West Coast team playing at 1 o'clock, so many things in in Cleveland's favor, and there still is a few things in their favor. Still love our defense against that offense. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do with McCaffrey. So many weapons, but long story short, the problem is this. You need everything to be going at full speed. If you're Cleveland and you're going to be able to knock off the 49ers in this game, they do not have that. Their best threat is is still recovering from surgery, Nick Chubb. They Deshaun Watson, if he's not 100%, I still say you sit him. A rotator cuff is not something you want to screw with. Yeah. Um, it is one of the most important body parts you could have. I'm telling you, again, as, a, as, as I say every week, as a broken down 41-year-old man, I'm telling you right now, like there's certain body parts that no matter what, they hurt every day. So anything you know from your neck to your basically your sternum, that's important stuff. Think about the, the when you throw a football, okay? What's that thing moving? Every Rotator time. Cuff. Back. <laughs> Thank you, Cole. <laughs> so back and back and back. My whole point is, is don't screw with this guy. You know, I, I was on a show last week. Um, I do the, some stuff with WAKR, and I actually stole your analogy, so I had to give you credit. You know, you, again, you talk about that brand-new Corvette, that, that sports car. If it's got a little air leaking from the tire, until you can fill it up, don't drive it, right? Because yeah, right. it, might, it might be a small tick. But that small tick of a problem could lead to something huge. The Browns right now, it's not over with if they drop to two and three. As Cole said, you look at this division, okay? And coming into the season, this was supposed to be the strongest division in football. And right now, it looks like one of the worst. You know, Baltimore does not look impressive at all, three and two. Pittsburgh, how in the world they have three wins is beyond me. And Cincinnati, we still don't, we don't know what's going on with Joe Burrow. I think after this week, we're going to have a better picture on that. All that being said, as much as I would love to pick the Browns, it, it would be amazing if they could win this game. Just too many things going against them. Do I think it's going to be a blowout? No. And, and and if Deshaun Watson plays, I think it's going to be real close. I just feel that it comes down to coaching in the very, very end with it. When you, when you take all the variables and everything else, and Kyle Shanahan is one of the best coaches in football. I say this every year. He hated Cleveland. He was here when we had Johnny Manziel, and Kyle Shanahan was working with Brian Hoyer, and he brought Brian Hoyer to a 7-4 record and made Brian Hoyer, Brian freaking Ho- Hoyer, look like a decent quarterback that season, right? Everything blew up on him. You know, he's the one guy that I know of, at least, that's ever quit a job, an offensive coordinator job in the NFL, and presented a presentation to the team he was leaving. This is why I'm quitting. You guys are doing all these things wrong. Go back. That's a true story. Go back and look for it. It exists. 
that's how much hate Shanahan, Shanahan has for Haslam. So when you mix all that in, um, I think the 49ers went handily. Ironically enough, it was the following year uh, after he had left in 2015. I'll never forget this because it was a little bit before um, I found out my, my wife was pregnant with my daughter Madeline. And just a lot of things jump out about that time frame in my life. But the 49ers actually played in Cleveland and the Browns beat them. And that was in 2015 in a season where I think the Browns won like three or four games all year long. So they actually beat the 49ers the last time San Francisco was here, I believe. Go back and check that. We all remember the whitewash two years ago, the first year of the Browns in, in 2019. The first year the Browns had OBJ. We played San Francisco on a Monday night, and it was embarrassing. I believe the Browns lost like 44 to 6. Baker Mayfield looked like he was ready for PB football that night. So it would be nice if we could get that win back. We'll see when it count on it. I think reminiscing on Kyle Shanahan, his time in Cleveland, one of the funniest clips is Shanahan and Mike McDaniels standing there on the sideline and Johnny Manziel's up along the sideline standing in bounds facing them and they basically just tell him when to go he runs <laughs> down the sideline for a completion that was one of the funniest play calls and the funniest moments probably the best highlight I can think of in Johnny Manziel's career because he stunk and oh, the yeah. funny thing is didn't Shanahan want Hoyer to to be the guy Yes, and, and the, then the franchise went with Manziel, and he was furious <laughs> because he felt like he could actually win some football games with Brian Hoyer, where he couldn't with Johnny Manziel. Well, um, what an interesting whirlwind that was. Listen, man, nobody does more work than an offensive or defensive coordinator, right? You have to look at every play, analyze it. It's a ton of work. So you got a guy like Kyle Shanahan, who we know was probably putting in anywhere from 15 to 18 hours a day, if not more. The guy is sleeping in his office, everything to do, everything he has to do to make Brian Hoyer look like a quarterback. And what do they do? But they go to Johnny Menzel, who it came out in a documentary about what? six weeks ago. Zero film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zero film. Shanahan's putting in crazy hours, and they go with the guy at quarterback who watched nothing. His yeah. iPad was zero on his screen time. I think it's hilarious. I just think it's hilarious. because You can't blame the guy. God forbid. I mean, Keon Sports is a family. We all get along. But if any of my employees ever quit and came to me with a presentation, my goodness, I might just give him ownership of the company at that point because you must really hate the people you work for. <laughs> so, yeah, we're way off topic. <laughs> Noted. Noted. <laughs> Start the presentation here right now. <laughs> we'll sit down next week, Vince. Ten no. reasons why. <laughs> ten reasons why I hate you, by Cole McTangle. <laughs> and then, we, then we're all good, and then we move on through the rest of football yeah, season exactly. and and keep things moving along. That's it. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, we'll see. Obviously, you and I both went went with the 49ers. Hopefully that it's a close game. Even a loss for the Cleveland Browns wouldn't necessarily be the end to this season because there's a long season left to go. Division's wide open. If you can play the 49ers close, I think that might actually be a little bit of a moral victory. Um, hate moral victories, but at the same time, it uh, could be necessary against one of the best teams in the NFL. Fingers crossed that we actually get a good ball game come this weekend though because I think that's almost more important than anything else that and that Watson does get to 100% sooner rather than later I'll be honest if he doesn't play I'm not going to be bent out of shape watching PJ Walker because I kind of want to see what Me Walker too. can do for the Cleveland Browns I am yep. actually kind of curious you know it's funny guys and we take you behind the camera every now and then um years ago when really me and Cole were I mean, we probably knew each other like six months. And I remember the XFL had just come back. It was the first season it was back and um, uh, still run by Vince McMahon and Dick Ebersol. That's how this was pre-COVID. It was a season that got canceled midway through because of COVID. But mm -hmm. look back at that because me and Cole were talking during that season about how we liked P.J. Walker. He was tearing it up in the XFL. So you never know. I guess that was four years ago or whatever it was. But it is kind of ironic that now we get to see him play possibly for the Browns. Yeah, could be could be interesting to see that, even though we'd, of course, prefer that Watson's healthy and out there. Well, Vince, 
that's going to wrap it up here for week six. We'll see if you can get a bounce back week. Of course, anybody out there who wants to see the full list of picks, go to keonsports.com. See if we have enough picks different that Vince could potentially knock this thing back up after we had a flip-flop here this past week. Vince, any final thoughts here before we go in this episode? Nope. Go over to keonsports.com. Check out my article. It should be up here in a little bit. Talking about the parody in the NFL. Uh, Read it and enjoy it. And for you parents out there, I've never talked about this on air, but uh, wrote wrote a thing ranking all 40 local parks in Northeast Ohio. Let me tell you, that article has more views than anything else on the website right now. So if you if you're a parent of little kids, obviously I think you're gonna enjoy this article. So really, don't usually plug myself or plug my articles, I should say. So yeah, go check those out. That's about it. You know, anytime that Vince writes about a park here in Northeast Ohio, it seems to do well. So yeah. all the parents <laughs> out there, thanks for checking it out. Make sure not only do you check out the article, go check out the park itself. See if Vince is right on his feedback on all these places. And, of course, you know where to find them if you disagree. I'm the weirdo at the park with the camera (laughs) taking pictures of your kid. Okay. And edit that out. And we're good. (laughs) And the show can wrap up here now. (laughs) Beyond Sports High School Football Game of the Week, by the way, this week. That's Solon at Brunswick. Myself, Dom Clary, Brandon Soder on the call. Happy to have Brandon back here. For this week, going to be a fun one. Make sure you check everything out, not only on the YouTube channel, but the website as well. That's going to do it for us. Enjoy the rest of your week, and enjoy this weekend full of football action. Climatech is a full-service company. We install as well as service both residential and commercial products. We service furnaces, air conditioners, heat pumps, boilers, mini split systems, tankless hot water. We've got a good group of technicians that have been developed into a company culture that delivers a good degree of confidence to the customer and gives us a good product output. They wanna take care of the customer and make sure that the customer is satisfied with their service. And when you've got non-stressed employees at your home, you're gonna get a greater result from that service call or from that installation. Our customer needs, comfort, and health are of utmost importance, and we strive to provide that to every customer within their budget. As we continue to grow, we remain focused on maintaining our high level of customer satisfaction. When you hire Climatech, you're hiring a whole team of experts that have been in the business well over 80 years. If you're looking for a new install, if you're looking for just maintenance on your equipment, we are the company of your choice. 